didn't hang out with girls when I was growing up. I went to an all-boys boarding school from the age of seven. I don't resent my parents for it. I was a shit. I deserved it. Um, I was asking too many questions. Questions no parent is prepared to answer. What happens to our bodies after we die? How can a benevolent God allow suffering? Why does Home Alone 3 have a different child? Too many questions. <laughs> Send them away. <laughs> and I had a good time, but all it means is you don't, you don't grow up, you don't meet, I didn't sort of know what a woman really looked like, apart from the ones in my family and the ones in Nuts magazine. No overlap. Um, <laughs> You go to university and I had sort of female friends there and they always told me that I would make a great boyfriend. My second least favourite compliment of them all. Um, <laughs> after being told by your computer that you have excellent password strength. <laughs> it's meaningless. <laughs> the thrill wears off. But I watched my friends in relationships. I tried to learn from them, learn their tricks. And finally, a couple of years ago, at a music festival, I met a girl and I wooed her. Not like some modern monster with an app, in the old-fashioned way. Sat next to her around a fireplace, plied her with booze, waited for everyone else to leave. <laughs> like Casanova himself. <laughs> We've been going out a while now. We recently celebrated our two-year um, anniversary. Needless to say, it went pretty well, yes. Mm. Dinner, card, hanky-panky, contract renewal. Um, <laughs> um, put a lot of effort into the card. I'm a good card writer, put a lot of multi-paragraph affair. <laughs> didn't want to end up like my friend Ben. My friend Ben, he'd been going out with his girlfriend Alice for about three years and then he let himself down with a Valentine's Day card. I'll read it for you because it's one of my favourite things of all time. <laughs> he just written, Dear Alice, Happy Valentine's Day, love Ben. That's fine, no one's querying the minimalist style. <laughs> but then he'd really stuck the knife in underneath by writing PS and then crossing it out. Oh! <laughs> Is there anything more brutal in this world <laughs> than the withdrawn addendum? <laughs> Dear Alice, light of my life, sailor of my ship, I have nothing left to say to you. Oh, no, wait, no, still nothing. <laughs> it was a false alarm. <laughs> the relationship's getting serious. I'm excited about that. Love has been declared. Not to make it sound too much like war, but it is serious. <laughs> And it's a big moment, the first time as an adult man telling an adult woman that you love them, response isn't laughter or being asked to leave the strip club. Yes! <laughs> I've not made that up for your amusement there, that's another true story. <laughs> an Eastern European lads holiday I should not have been invited on. <laughs> Fundamentally misunderstood the strip club etiquette. <laughs> but I've moved on and so I'm sure has Elena. Um, <laughs> Um, I want to stay in the relationship, I think. Uh, we're spending a lot of time together. Um, no, no, it's, it's, it's very, very important to me. But you don't want to sort of overdo it, obviously, have too much sort of uh, exposure to the other person and sort of kill that sort of new love. I don't want this to be halloumi all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only person here to have had a sort of midlife halloumi epiphany and then fatally overdosed. <laughs> a friend of mine slipped me some on the slide at barbecue last year. I've never taken LSD, but I imagine there are parallels. <laughs> Seeing colours, feeling this sense of warmth towards everyone around me. I had more halloumi in the following month than anyone else has ever had in their entire lives. <laughs> Going into any shop to buy it. I was trying to sort of restart the Greek economy on my own cheese-based terms. <laughs> Taking it home to cook it and then eating it all raw before the pan was even hot. <laughs> Just couldn't restrain myself. <laughs> Flatmate comes home, I'm on the sofa. Naked, but for my boxer shorts, halloumi crumbs all over my face and torso. <laughs> going, it's just so goddamn squeaky. <laughs> I want to stay in the relationship. I, 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 I love my girlfriend, and I fear being alone. I like to think I'd be cool in a breakup scenario, but then I also used to think I'd be cool in a mugging scenario. <laughs> then I got mugged last year in South London, and needless to say, those illusions get shattered very quickly, I can tell you. <laughs> when I say I thought I'd be cool, I didn't mean like, sort of winning the fight and keeping my possessions. I'm not an idiot, I just meant handing them over, but in a sort of cool and relaxed way, you know? Congratulations, sir, you've won this particular duel, but uh, <laughs> home contents insurance will be my trusty steed. <laughs> I'd have loved to have said that. Or anything, or anything at all, apart from a couple of frightened yelps and a fear fart. <laughs> Then went full English, more English than I've ever been in my entire life. <laughs> Dropped the phone, picked it up, the screen had cracked. I handed it to him and apologised. <laughs> so it turns out that's my main emotion in a mugging scenario. Guilt. 